Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turns my life around. He turns my life around. He makes a way where there seems no way. Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turned my life around. He turned my life around. He makes a way where there seems no way. Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say in your life, Jehovah? Has the final say in mine? Who has the final say in your life? Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turned my life around, round, round, round. He turned my life around. He makes a way where there seems no way. Jehovah has the final say. He makes a way where there seems no way. Jehovah has a final say. I give you glory, Lord. I give you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. I give you glory, Lord. I give you glory today. I give you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. I give you glory, Lord. I give you glory today. I give you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. I give you glory, Lord. Now and forever I do. I give you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. Jehovah turned my life around. He turned my life around. He makes a way where there seems no way. Jehovah has the final thing. Who has the final say in your life? Jehovah has the final say in mine. Who has the final say in your life? Jehovah has the final say. Oh yes, he turned my life around. He turned my life around. He makes a way where there's no way. Jehovah has the final say. He makes a way where there seems no way. Jehovah has the final say. So I give you glory, Lord. I give you glory today. I give you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. I give you glory, Lord. Now and forever, always. I give you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. I give you glory, Lord, today and tomorrow. I give you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. He's a mighty God. I feel like singing and dancing today, but, well, my position and where I'm always sitting, I can't dance. But I'm hoping that soon enough we're going to do an edition where we can dance, we can sing. We're just not going to be singing normally. We're going to be singing and dancing, and you can see me dance. Oh my God. Welcome, Mr. Nyedikachi Prince Will. Welcome, 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 welcome. And what? Sir Gideon Ekukinam. Gidi Billion. Where have you been? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Where on planet Earth have you been? It's been ages. Oh my God. I still just love God. I can't stop smiling. Smile is my. I guess it's a gift from God for me. Where have you been? My goodness. Like, I've looked for you like all over. <laughs> you know how the song, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. <laughs> I couldn't find you nowhere. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Come on. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Oh, God is too much. God is just awesome. But we're definitely going to get a, an, a, an opportunity to get a, uh, a certain 
a chapter a day someday someday whenever that is we don't know how and when and what time where we can dance i'll be dancing and all before we get to do a chapter a day i know a lot of people are gonna like it i'll like it too because i like dancing i love singing and dancing so yeah welcome 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 so let's pray and hand over the session to god almighty and then we'll start the birthday party before the bible party oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah lord we thank you for this amazing day you've given to us a day you've made that will rejoice and be glad in it lord for those who are just starting their day bless them let them have an amazing day so far for those who are halfway their day lord i pray that you're going to strengthen them and they're going to enjoy the rest of the day for those of us who are in the night lord i pray for those who are about to sleep you give them sound sleep and sweet dreams O oh lord father i pray for all those who are going to be watching and listening this program whatever time they decide to do oh god father you're going to speak to them and minister to them in a way that only you can we don't know what the people need we cannot find out what the people are desiring in the inner inner innermost parts of the heart but you know so lord i pray through your word today answer those questions see see bring solutions to those problems show them the way oh god that they'll walk in it lord Come and guide us, lead us, and teach us all that we need to learn and cause us to be able to unlearn and relearn things that are supposed to be and also to be able to teach others and have a teachable spirit. Thank you, Lord God, because I know you've heard and answered. Increase while I decrease. So it's going to be you will be seen, felt, and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day. Take all the glory, but now forevermore. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, and uh, amen, 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 and amen. So let's go, people. It's not going to be the birthday party. Who was born on the 15th? Who? That's the 15th. Who was born on the 14th of October? Let's find out. All oh, the amazing people were born on this day. Let's get to find them. Do, 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 do. But before, um, today we're reading Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25. And Genesis chapter 25 has how many verses? We need to know. We need to know. Genesis chapter 25 has how many verses? It has 34 verses, so that's going to be a short read, basically. We read long, long, long yesterday. So let's find out those who were born today. Oh my God, amazing people. Okay, we have Mr. Harry Acha. Mr. Harry Acha, we actually met on social media. Yeah, I believe. We met on social media and then I think we finally met did we finally meet physically? I'm not sure. Things kept happening so we could not meet physically. No matter how many, how many times we planned to meet, we couldn't meet, I think. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Harry Acher. He's a media personality par excellence. He's also an activist. He's also a philanthropist. Oh my God, generation change. I'll tell you about it some other time. He's an amazing person. And he used to have this issue as well that I used to have. So he's like, when he's talking in some places and people are just like onto the seam and then they're surprised why he speaks the way he does. I don't know how I started talking like this. I can't even understand it. I just know it's God. I don't know how to explain it because I'm feeling like this is how I've been talking. I don't know if some people think it started when I started traveling. The funny thing is I've never traveled to a place where people talk like this. I don't even. So it's not. I don't think it's travel. I guess God just did it. I watched the movie yesterday, the little girl who believes in miracles. And this little girl just started drawing stuff so beautifully after she had an encounter with God. I guess it happens like that. Maybe I just had an encounter with God and, and he just made me to start talking like this because he had to use me to do things like this, like a chapter a day. So he made me to have the opportunity to be able to talk the way I do. So I guess he also has that issue. When people hear him talk, they're like, huh? 
they don't think he's from my country so do people not think i'm also from my country i don't like calling the names all the time okay so let's go um happy birthday to you sir harry Acher, and i wish you all the best especially generation change um let's go ma'am as we knew Gum. i met my as we Gum on a group that we're together and it's really a group of some amazing smart people who bring solutions to problems and i later on met her physically she's an amazing person oh my god it has been awesome since we connected since we got to know each other and connected and met each other you know a couple of times i think yeah a couple of times it's been beautiful all the way and then we have brother albert royce um so albert royce is actually my filipino choir master some time ago um like i said i was in a choir where like three quarter of the choir was made up of filipinos and then we had nigerians and myself so it was it was cool he was our choir leader he can sing he can oh my god the guy's just good i mean these people are just good at what they do so but one thing i'd say is when you're gifted when god gives you a gift and you're using it it's really beautiful it's really really beautiful so happy birthday to you um our amazing choir leader and friend he's very friendly he's very welcoming he's very accommodating i mean like and when he sees something good about you he tells you straight up when he sees something that he doesn't like he tells you straight up as well he's just gonna tell you he's not gonna miss his words and i like that about him thank you so much for being an awesome person for however long I was there and for coping with all my, I don't know, <laughs> all my issues. Thank you. And the last but not the least, Mr. Ari Elvis and Tweet. Mr. Ari Elvis and Tweet is one very smart and amazing, amazing human being. Like, oh my God, I got to know him um, through a mutual post, I think a friend's mutual post. And when I got to connect with him, I thought that it was the lady was his sister. No, no, no. I actually connected with him on a mutual friend's post. And then later on, I also met this lady who has a name, um, my warrior princess, Are Echi. I actually thought they were brothers and sisters. Like, they were just so, so smart, like uniquely smart. And I felt like they were one family just because of the name, you know. So... And then I finally got to connect with Arechi actually on Sir Are um, Tree's post. So that's how I got connected to these amazing people. But here I got connected with him on a mutual friend's post. And he is so intelligent. He's so smart. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And there's never a dull moment with him. I like the fact that he always encourages me to be my best. Sometimes he watches my videos and tells me, oh, this is good. He reads my write-ups and tells me this is good and stuff like that. And some of the write-ups I share, I don't share basically only things I write. I'm not even a writing person. I'm actually a talking person. I mostly share write-ups that I see that have inspired me, that blessed me, that can transform me and stuff like that. So that's exactly what I do. And I think I posted one of his his write-ups as well I, I don't know i can't remember exactly but that's who he is he's actually really an amazing person if you get to know him like from a distance you just feel like he's this serious serious focused person but when you get to know him you know he's very friendly very accommodating very welcoming i mean like he's he's really nice he's really really nice and <laughs> and uh, he's so cute that's another one. Oh yeah, he's so cute. Some people are gonna say princess. What are you saying? Well, I kind of get to connect to very handsome and beautiful people, so I rub off of the handsomeness and beauty, and then that's why I'm kind of looking sweet. You know, people say I look sweet. That's the secret. That's part of the secret. I kind of connect to beautiful and handsome people, so I rub off. <laughs> we keep rubbing off of each other. And we can't grow ugly, you know. <laughs> Miss Aaron is going to deal with me for this part. Okay, that's by the way. So, happy birthday to these four amazing people. I don't know whose birthday I've missed. If I've missed your birthday, just forgive me and we're going to figure it out. 
probably next year if Christ Harris to come I'm definitely gonna um, wish you happy birthday because we're gonna be doing this for three years I told us all oh, the Bible has 1189 chapters and we're supposed to be reading a chapter a day so of course that's gonna take us about three years if Christ Harris to come I keep adding that okay so happy birthday sir Harry Acha happy birthday ma'am Azin Wingum happy birthday sir Ari Elvis and Tweet happy birthday sir albert ross you all are amazing so let's pray for you guys and then we'll get straight up to the bible party father we bring before you all these amazing people who were born on this 14th day of october father we pray you use them as point of contact to bless every single person who was born on this particular day oh lord open the windows of heaven upon their lives and rebuke every devourer in the mighty name of jesus Clothe them with a garment of blessing, praise, and honor so that they're going to increase in wisdom and start to gain favor before God and before men. And there will be a blessing in their generation and beyond. And this blessing is going to encompass them as a shield round about so that no weapon will fashion against them shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to give them the grace to continue fulfilling purpose and being solution to problems in the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them strength and grace that is needed to do and undo so that your glory will be seen throughout their lives in the mighty name of jesus father i pray oh god if they they're almost trained apart or they're almost giving up or they're almost losing out oh father i pray that they're going to hear a clear voice right behind them saying this is the way walk down and to the own strength so the own derail oh lord father i pray you cause them to be trailblazers space setters and wall changers in the mighty name of jesus let them be able to go and conquer their world in jesus name Father, I pray that whatever they lay their hands upon, you're going to prosper it. Because their destiny help us to locate them and do that which they ordained and created to do in their lives. And I pray you also open their eyes to see those who they're supposed to be destiny help us to, to help these people in a very special way. Lord, I pray that they're never going to lack help. Help is going to come from east, west, north, and south anytime that they cry out in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you're going to make them the head and not the toe. You're going to cause them to raise them to the top and cause them to stay at the top permanently because only you can do that. Lord, I pray anything or any person that is going to be a distraction in their lives, that is going to cause them to, to, to stay stagnant, not to progress. Oh Lord, I dissociate them. I disconnect them from such people and such things in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I decree that they're going to be a divine connection to things and people that will cause them to progress in the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that you're going to cause them to stand before kings and not before mean men, O oh Lord. That their gifts are going to make a way for them in every single way and every single place that they find themselves, O oh Lord. Father, bless the works of their hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessing meets blessings in their lives. Favor meet favor in their lives, even as they go about their activities and about their season. Lord, these beautiful pages that are opening in their lives today write beautiful stories. Stories that will cause them to have a continuous Psalms 126 state, a state of laughter. That they're going to laugh through this year, sing and dance to the glory of your name. Because you're going to keep doing amazing and awesome things in their lives throughout the season. By your grace, if, we tarry to, if you tarry to come, they're going to be here next year. Giving testimonies of your goodness and your faithfulness in their lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Because I know you've had an answer. Give them strategies, ideas, and techniques to be able to fulfill purpose smoothly and soundly and safely. Give them the strength that is necessary to be able to resist every temptation and do that which you desire and you created them to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because I know you've had an answer. Perfect all that concerns them. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, let it be so, amen, in their lives, amen, 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 let it be so, amen, 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 in their lives, amen, let it be so, amen, 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 let it be so, amen, 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 in their lives, amen, let it be so, amen, amen. Amen. Let's get the Bible party started. Get the Bible party started. The Bible party started. Get the Bible party started. Bible party started. 
This girl right here, she loves to dance and sing. So y'all, bear with me. When sometimes I just <laughs> pop up and start dancing and singing and all that, mm, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. So we're reading Genesis chapter 25 today. It's a jubilee thingy. Let's read it on. Ready or not, here I come. Genesis chapter 25 has 34 verses. Let's do this. Genesis chapter 25. Then Abraham again took a wife, and her name was Keturah, and she bare him Zimram, and Joshkan, and Midian, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. And Joshkan begat Sheba, and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Ashurim, and Letushim, and Letushim. And Lumi, and the sons of Medan, Epha and Epha, and Hanok, and Abida, and Elda, all these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived, an hundred, three score, and fifteen years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man, and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his son Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, which is before Mamre. The field which Abraham purchased of the son of Heth, of the sons of Heth, there was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelled by the well Lahiroi. Now these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajot, and Kedah, and Adbil, and Mipsam, and Mishma, and Mishma, and Duma, and Masa, Hadar, and Tema, Jetu, Nafish, and Kedema. These are the sons of Ishmael. And these are their names by their towns and by their castles, twelve princes according to their nations. And these are the years of the life of Ishmael, an hundred and thirty and seven years. And he gave up the ghost and died, and was gathered unto his people. And they dwelt from Havilah unto Shore, that is before Egypt, as thou goest towards Assyria. And he died in the presence of all his brethren. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the sister to Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, Behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment, and they gave his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years when she bare him. And the boys grew, and Esau was a kerning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau, because he did eat of his venison 
of his venison but rebecca loved jacob and jacob sought pottage and jacob sought pottage and asel came from the field and he was faint and asel said to jacob feed me i pray thee with that same red pottage for i am faint therefore was his name called adam and jacob said sell me this day thy bed right and asel said behold i am at the point to die what profit shall this bed right do to me and jacob said swear to me this day and he swore unto him and he sold his bed right unto jacob then jacob gave esau bread and pottage of lentils and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way thus esau despised his bed right i really never noticed that it was that bad like I just used to know. I've read it before, but it's now that it, it, King James is really interesting because I think I've read it in New King James or New International Version. Come to think of it, today this is really different. Okay, let's just go and study. I don't know if anybody knows why Abraham had to send away the other people. Truth is. God sees just one wife. As much as we want to give excuses as to the fact that these people had concubines, these people had... The truth is that God is still going to do what He wants to do through your life or with your life, even when you're not obeying Him fully. Because sometimes He still just wants to use you, regardless. He used an ass. The ass is not born again. The ass is not in heaven. There was a point in time where God called Nebuchadnezzar my servant. Was he ever born again? He wasn't. God is still going to use people. So it's not about the power. It's not about the flow of power through you that makes you a born again Christian. Don't get it twisted. Power flew through animals. Power flew through things. It didn't make them born again. So some people kind of think that their relationship with God is still going good because they still have some unction flowing. They're praying miracles are happening. They're doing stuff and God is it's like they're the happening people in their area or in their community or in their vicinity. Because God knows that the people kind of believe in you. So he's still going to use you even in your depraved state. But it's very risky for you if you don't get to understand it, if you don't get to realize that you're disconnected and connect again. You need to learn that because with time, it's going to stop. He's going to raise some other person when he sees that he's talking to you and trying to bring you back to the place, to the first love. And he's trying to bring you back and you don't want to go back there. He's not going to strive with you. He says, my spirit does not strive with man. So he's going to leave. He's going to leave. Because light and darkness cannot dwell together. Cannot dwell together. So Abraham had to send away these other people because he knew like he knew that the son of promise was Isaac. But he wasn't going to let those people just go like that. He gave them gifts. He gave them gifts. So I would, I would liken that to, to people who have people that are working under them. You know some of these people have boys who come and learn a trade and everything. And when it's time to settle them, you begin to play funny. I watched the movie as well that this man was playing funny and he was rendered to zero. Z, I mean, like he was rendered to zero. Don't play with children, especially children of God. Don't play with them, but don't play with people's stuff. Let nobody work for you and you don't diligently reward them. You have to reward people for their work that they've done. A curse without the cause cannot stand. If some of these people cry out to God, you're going to be dealt with. For not settling them settle people when people work for you when people do jobs for you settle them don't take advantage of people i i heard that th this is what the man was doing actually so he would he would um bring somebody and the person would come and work for him work for him when it's just about time for the person to go he will bring up an issue and then him and the person will have problems and then he will not settle the person and will just start accusing the person can you imagine that that's so sad it's so bad it's not a good thing to do. And he dealt, he had his reward. He says, whatever you sow, you reap. Whatever you sow, you reap. He came and got one boy that the boy crept his store and disappeared. The boy stole from him. He was always claiming that those other ones stole from him. Those ones did not steal from him. He was claiming they stole from him. 
As he had done it and done it and done it, he did it to one Christian man. The pastor came to come and plead with him and try to explain things he didn't want to hear. He insulted the pastor as well. Started going down the drain slowly, 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 but surely. And one of his boys that he brought one time dealt with him and carried all his money and disappeared. You reap what you sow. And the funny thing is, harvest is always bigger than the sowing power. You know, whatever you plant is small, but the harvest always comes in grand style. So be careful what you're sowing. Be careful for your sakes what you sow. It's, it, the, God is telling you to be cautious of what you sow, not for people's sake, but for your sakes. Because whatever you sow, you're going to get it back. It says, and give and it will come back to you. Good measure, praise down, shaking together. They're not just talking about money. They're not just talking about material things. They're talking about every single thing that you give. You give time, God is going to give you time, like extra time for some things. Like maybe he's just going to favor you for something that people will take ages to do. And then he does it for you in like a short time. That's him giving you extra time, basically. It's like extra time. So whatever you sow, you reap. So Abraham realized that it was only Isaac who was the son of promise. And so he sent the other ones away, gave them gifts, gave them stuff. And send them away because God had made the promise and he knew that the promise was on Isaac's head. So it had to be Isaac only. And probably because he didn't want strife between them, that's why he had to send them away. Because there's always a tendency of strife getting off when he wants to do what he wants to do. Especially as Ishmael wasn't, um, Isaac wasn't even the first. He wasn't even the first. Ishmael was there. So he knew that they'll probably be strife. So he was always a peacemaker. Abraham was always looking for a way to make peace. So he actually sent um, he actually sent all the children and the, the concubines away and stayed only with Isaac. And God was blessing Isaac and blessing Isaac and blessing Isaac. When God has set a promise upon your life or the life of your forefathers, it works. It comes down. But one thing I'm excited is that he had canceled the fact of our parents are not going to do something wrong and then the impact is on us. No. They're not going to eat sour grapes and then our, our teeth are on edge. No. He fixed that one. So I'm really happy. <laughs> I'm really happy. Okay. So it was easy to bury Abraham because he had already bought a burying place and everything. They buried him by his wife and all that. And so um, Rebecca... You see the power of prayers. Rebecca couldn't give birth. And so um, the husband prayed. Prayer works. Prayer does miracles. I believe in prayers. Please, you all should take it seriously. Take any little wincy, tinsy, bitsy thing that bothers you to God in prayer. Take it to God in prayer. Take it to God in prayer. It works. Prayer works. Prayer works. I'm a living testimony. I'm a walking testimony of the impact of prayer of the of the difference in my life that prayer has made that is making and it will keep making because i'll keep praying of course when you see something works for you won't you be doing it some more and some more and some more you do it some more so um it showed that her womb was locked and so um isaac prayed and prayed and prayed and she was actually going to give birth to twins this is cool right but god had said that Two nations are in her womb. She kept having this fight and this thing. Two nations are in the womb. The older is going to serve the younger. Okay, that's intriguing. We'll reach the place. I'll talk about what I wanted to say now, but I'll just commence my reserve. And they came out and everything. One was a house person, the home person, and the other one was a field person. He always gets to the field. And the dad liked the one. You see this thing of having to choose favorite children based on particular things. My biological dad was like that too. He used to like those who loved school and those who were passing a lot. And then those who were not so school, not so into school, not like they were feeling, but they're not so into school. They're not like the school, school kind of people, but they were smart in other areas, but they were not so into school, school, school. My dad wasn't favoring them so much. Not like he didn't like them, but basically, if you're the school person who passes your exams and does everything, if you ask my dad for anything, he'll literally give you. I mean, like me who likes food, I could just go and say, I want to drink this. I want to drink juice. I'll get juice. I want to eat soya. I'll get soya. Stuff like that, you know. But somebody who doesn't pass as much, 
you wouldn't even bother to go and ask because he's not going to give you. You only have to wait when he has decided that today we're going to drink juice, today we're going to eat soya and stuff like that. He used to do that all the time, like very frequently. My dad made us very comfortable. He was very hardworking. He wasn't earning so much, but he really made us live a comfortable life with whatever he was earning. I'm really grateful to him for that. And I thank God for him. I know he's smiling right now in heaven and saying, oh yeah, my daughter, thank you. Yeah, I wish I told him more when he was alive. But I used to be very thankful to him. When he does anything for me, I'll thank him really, really much. I used to be really thankful. I've always been thankful though. I like to thank people for things they do for me. And some people say I overdo it. But I don't think I do. I don't think I overdo it. You're just supposed to thank people unreservedly. You're just supposed to thank people like always, always, all the time. That's what I believe though. So, um, Asa was the one who was going to the, to the field and doing all the stuff. The dad liked him because of the foods that he used to bring, the game and everything. He probably cooked some pepper soup goat's meat or some pepper soup lamb. Oh my God, I can imagine. And Isaac is just, whoa. Isaac is just, whoa, like that. So your gift always makes a way for you. Your gift has a way of getting to people's hearts. Your gift has a way of people who need your gift will naturally be drawn to you. I say this all the time. And I'll say it every time, every day, as much as I can. When you have a gift and you're using it and you're doing that thing that you're called to do, there is just the tendency of people being drawn to you, people who need that solution, people who need that thing. They'll just be naturally drawn to you. That's how it works. That's how it goes. Okay. So um, let's go. Let's go to the next story. And so Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebecca loved Jacob because Jacob was a house person. You know women, right? Women like their children to always be around them, talking with them, you know, gisting and all that kind of thing. But oh, men are not so. So um, Isaac was rather into, I want my game and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So this love actually got to show um somewhere somehow okay so let's go on there are times that things will be so hard that you might want to sell your bed right but think again there is a scripture that says and asa sought his bed right in tears but he could not get it you don't want to get to that point See, the Bible is written for our learning, for instruction, for correction, for direction, and for inspiration into to righteousness, right? So they wrote this story about Asa and Jacob. It's real. It happened. And they wrote it so that we should learn that for no reason should you despise your birthright or sell it off. The devil might put you, you might get into a scenario where you're like, I'm already about dying. What is this bed right? Hold your bed right to the death. Ah, I can imagine for one day, or it was one, what, what was it? And he says he's about to die. Huh? He not reached that level. I'm sure he was just so hungry and he, he thought, you know that kind of thing like you're like, well, I don't think this guy is serious. He's just saying this to hear what I would say. But people take your word seriously. Whatever you say. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. So if you're decreeing a thing, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. I'm sure in his mind somewhere, he was just like, I beg, I beg, I beg, give me chop my chop, say, bed right. What is bed right? Like, please also your bed right, though. Your bed right could be you sleeping with a man for money. Your bed right could be you um, um, doing whatever that, crazy person wants you to do because you need to pay your school fees your bed right could be anything a lot of us who are selling our bed rights in different ways when they talk about bed rights it's not like you're going to take your best certificate and sell it to somebody no no some of us you're supposed to be taking care of your younger ones but your younger ones are taking care of you you're selling your bed right i'm not talking about the stage where there is just no way for you. you you're doing all you can you're doing the best you can you're hustling but things are not turning out right for you that's a different thing entirely. 
but they're the ones that some people have just taken up upon themselves they're just sitting and it's their younger ones that are taking care of them you're selling your bed rights to that person it's about time you wake up and do what you have to do welcome mr clovis Gua. welcome 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 glad to have you god bless you don't forget to share us out so many more people can come we're even almost at the end of the the thing today and he said I don't care what is bed right about. I beg, give me food. I'm about to die. He wasn't going to die. The enemy sometimes will put you in a position where you feel like you're going to die. Die if you have to. But don't sell your bed right. Don't sell your bed right. I know people who have looked for jobs and they say if they don't sleep with the, with the, with the boss, they're not going to get the job. And they didn't sleep with the boss and ended up getting the job. Some people needed a promotion and they say, if you don't join our cult, you're not going to get the promotion. And some people joined the cult, got the promotion, but their lives were at stake. They almost died. What are the ways you, the enemy is pushing you to sell your bed right? Is it to get a particular job? Is it to get a particular position? Is it to, part to get a particular person in your life? What is it? How are you selling your bed right? We need to be intuitive. We need to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. There are lots of things that we're doing that pertain to selling our bed rights, that are equivalent to us selling our bed rights. For food. <laughs> Me, I like food though. For God, I beg you. I take, I take your name, beg you day. I, let me never sell my bed right for food. Never. You may never sell my bed right for food. What is that thing? What is that thing that you're desperate about? What is that thing that you want so, so desperately that the enemy is using to trick you to sell your bed right? Do not sell your bed right for nothing in this world. Die with it. Die with it. If it means you have to die and not get that thing that you want, so that you can save your bed right and keep it safe, die with your bed right. I had gotten to a point where I was very desperate when it came to marriage. I was very desperate. I could, I could do every other thing. People saw that I was hard working. I was making money, good money. I was, I'd graduated. I had a good level of education and everything. But it just feels like relationship thing wasn't working. So I finally got into this relationship in my desperation. I finally got into this relationship. I can't blame the guy totally. I was desperate. And desperation cannot, cannot make a relationship work. It can't. I have to be in the right frame of mind to be in a relationship that will be able to last and be able to stand the test of time. But with a desperate mindset, that relationship wasn't going to last. It was just heading for the rocks. And it did. It did. So in my desperation, in my whole desire to just want to be in the, in the whole relationship thing, I was slowly selling my bed right because I was like, huh. and then it got abusive and everything. I was still there because what I wanted to prove a point to the world. I, people, people know me to be a hardworking girl, a hardcore, a never giving up. You know, she got all this figured out basically as it looked in the world system. I got every other thing figured out, but they'll be like, you can figure out every other thing, work, school, this, that. But you can't figure out relationships? Really? So I wanted to prove a point to the world. So I stayed in this abusive relationship for a while. But thank God for God. Because he still saved me. I was there. Being treated bad. Being treated wrong. And I was just selling my bed right slowly but surely. And going and going. And thank God for God that I had an opportunity to take it back. To retrieve mine. Asal sought his with tears. He couldn't get it. Don't sell yours. I've been there. So now I don't get pressured. I don't get pressured. Do I have people who come to me and say things and say all those things? They say it gets here and gets out here. You know why? Because I know what God has said. I'd rather get to heaven single than go to hell married because if you miss it in marriage, you just might end up in hell. Trust me. There are people who are going through hell on earth already. Because they got married. And marriage is supposed to be a beautiful thing. It's supposed to be enjoyable. Because it's the only relationship that is compared between our relationship with God. The bride of Christ. Are you kidding me right now? 
it's ordained to be beautiful. But a lot of people are enduring. I was in this relationship and I was enduring. Imagine that I ended up marrying that kind of person. Maybe you guys would never have met me on here doing a chapter a day. Maybe I wouldn't even have been alive, you know, like that. It's very terrible because I got out of that relationship depressed and I was thinking of killing myself. I was thinking like I was useless. I was thinking like I was worthless. So please, don't sell your best right. You're more than enough. God created you for a purpose. God created you beautifully, amazingly for a reason. Let nobody make you feel less of yourself. If you're around people that are making you feel less of yourself, less of who you are, then leave. Leave that environment. Leave those people. Find people that will make you believe in yourself, that will make you trust yourself and do what God wants you to do. So people, I don't know what it is that is your bed, right? I don't know where you are. I don't know what level you are right now. I don't know how much of the wall the enemy has pushed you to. And you're thinking of just, well, let me just let go. No, don't, don't give up. Don't give up. You've come too far from where you started. And God did not bring you this far to leave you. It's not the God I serve. The God that I serve, he doesn't, he doesn't leave his, his mission halfway. He always accomplishes his mission. When he starts a thing with you, he finishes it. He takes it to the end. Sometimes even in our doubt and unbelief, he still takes it to the end because he had promised. He's a faithful God. He who has promised is faithful to do that which he promised. He that has promised is faithful to do that which he promised. So people, just keep at it. Get it on with, okay? God loves you. God wants you to be your best. God created you for a purpose. Let nobody make you believe less of that. And it's only in studying the word of God that you know who you are in Christ and who you carry and the power you possess and the promises that are made in the word of God for you. The ones that are there, the ones that are yet to come, all are tied in the salvation package. But you have to accept Christ. You have to accept the gift of Christ Jesus. You have to accept that gift. And then these things are going to start getting manifested in your life. Are we saying that there are not going to be challenges? No, they, they are going to be challenges. But you're, you're going to be getting into those challenges with a victor's mindset. Knowing that victory is yours already because Christ defeated death and every other thing. And gave you victory already. We have our victory in Christ. So people... Don't sell your birthright. I don't know how I should say this. I don't know if I could say it in other languages. I would, but I can't. Don't sell your birthright. Um, how do they say it? Ne vend pas votre droit de naissance. Ne vend pas votre droit de naissance. I don't know if that's right, but don't sell your birthright. That's what it is. No say, no say ya 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 authority. No sell them. No no dash them. No. Sometimes we give it for free too. Some people don't only sell it; they give it for free. Fornication is selling your bed right. Adultery is selling your bed right. Anger is selling your bed right. Stealing is selling your bed right. Like, what are the things? Name them. Name all those things. We know them. And the funny thing is that some of these things, because they're not seen, we don't even address them. We don't deal with them. When it is seen, when it is big, when people can see it, you commit fornication or you get pregnant and people can see the pregnancy, it's easy for you to actually come back and accept and actually ask God for forgiveness as opposed to when you fornicated or you adulterated and nothing happened, you know. So most of the time, some of these things, anger, hatred, bitterness, uh, unforgiveness, those are the things that cannot be seen. We hardly trash them. We hardly deal with them. May God help us. Father, search us through and through and help us, O oh Lord. Father, let your word come through, O oh God, like a two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing and putting a son that even bones and marrow, O oh Lord. Let your word really be engrafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts. So we're going to be doers and not hearers only. Thank you for such a word today, O oh Lord. 
take all the glory but not forever one in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen and yes people i love you all so so very much but god loves you way way more get to like share and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live it has been your favorite baby girl princess glitter and queen of hearts and laughter tomorrow we're going to be reading genesis chapter 26 please go do well to read ahead of time and when we come back here tomorrow we're gonna have this all time together right i hope so i trust so take care ciao ciao